We're talking about the next dead body. It might be Nikki. It will be someone. You're not hearing me. Born dead gives me nothing. Can I talk to you privately? A writer can write a screenplay, and a director can conceive of a sequence, but the actor has to take all of that and walk across that line and do it in the moment. Anything new? No. It's just bits and pieces. And Matt's a fantastic actor, and he's got great good taste and good judgment. His instincts are profound. I think audiences know that Matt, as a movie star, is obviously a hero. He's a good guy. But he's a wonderful player of parts where the given character is actually very dark. If you look at Jason Bourne as a character on the page, this is a, a man who's killed people in cold blood. He's a man steeped in violence. And yet, you know that the character is aiming towards the light. So what you get is you feel he's a character at war with himself. Sir? 644? It's fine. Thank you. The reason why these films work, it's because in the end, Matt can play those two things in an interesting and incredibly accurate way. And why are they still after me? I don't know. Certainly, Jason Bourne is the lead, but we have these really interesting characters that are chasing after him and coming up against him, and that's, I think, what makes the movie so rich. Let's talk about Conklin. What are you after, pal? You want to fry me? You want my desk, is that it? I want to know what happened. What happened? Jason Bourne happened. You got the files. Whoever's kind of chasing Bourne in these movies, they just hire the best available actor. <laughs> I don't send you to kill. I send you to be invisible. I send you because you don't exist. Between Chris Cooper and Joan Allen, I think two of the best actors in our country. When I was looking for somebody to replace Chris, I wanted an actor who was similarly classy. Joan brings that cool, cerebral intelligence to the part of Pamela Landy. She's a worthy opponent for Bourne. I think this movie has kind of a very hip, sort of edgy quality to it. It was great to watch her work. You know, she's an incredibly talented actress, and to watch her focus and dedication was unbelievable. Unquestionably, Joan Allen is, is within the top five American actresses. Just wonderful to work with. She's the creme de la creme of American actors. I'm convinced that Bourne knows something. He, he knows that you're after him. And in the interest of self-preservation, you might start with that. He's a perfectionist, Brian, and a magnificent presence, you know. In many ways, this is his film. He comes center stage now, and Brian seizes it. And he's Scottish and I'm English, so that was highly entertaining. We've had some, a lot of fun in uh, some of our scenes together because there is this butting heads. Operation Treadstone. Never heard of it. It's not gonna fly. With all due respect, Pam, I think you might have wandered a little past your pay grade. One of the things that's interesting about Bourne stories is that there isn't one bad guy. There's a bad system. You want characters within that system who are playing against time, you know, and introducing complexity. What if somebody were trying to cover their tracks by blaming Conklin and Bourne? We have the guy who used to be um, Chris Cooper's assistant, who basically sold him down the river, who's Gabriel Mann, who plays the Zorn character. It's a lot of fun to play a character that, you know, is seemingly on the good side, but you're actually rooting for the supposed bad guy. What if Bourne didn't have anything to do with this? We have Julia Stiles, who comes back in a much bigger role than she had in the first movie. We got along really well, but it sometimes was dangerous because we'd be cracking jokes and we'd have to, all of a sudden, we'd be rolling and we'd have to be very serious and talk about who's gonna get killed next. Are we talking about protecting Nikki or killing Bourne? We're talking about killing Bourne. She is an incredibly focused actress. She prepares herself meticulously. I loved working with her. When she's cowering for her life in that subway corridor there, you know my file. No, you've never worked in Berlin. My first job. It's an absolutely electric moment. I swear! I know no, I was here, never. Nikki! You feel her character, but you also feel what it's doing to Bourne. We were looking for Kirill, and that's really when I really studied Carl Urban's work. I'd seen him in Lord of the Rings, and to be honest, I didn't think that it would be a role that he would take, you know, because there's not much on the page for it. Well, I mean, that was actually one of the things that was most appealing to me about the role. I mean, this character doesn't say a whole hell of a lot, but what he does speaks volumes. And I, I kind of believe an ounce of behavior is worth a pound of words. Just for him! 
The Bourne Supremacy felt often like I had a fleet of Rolls Royces and Ferraris and Mercedes outside my front door and it was like, today, oh well I've got the Ferrari on. Tomorrow it's the Mercedes. In that these were all actors that have the most extraordinary and rare talent and I loved it. Oh! <laughs>